Welcome to another video, everybody. Today, I'm back with another dose of creepy 90s nostalgia as I have six more classic Goosebumps covers built in LEGO to share with all of you. Your comments from the previous episode helped me pick these entries, so if you have ideas for episode four, let me know. And with that, let's jump into it. The first cover on today's list is Let's Get Invisible. The book tells the story of Max, who finds an old mirror in his attic that can turn him invisible. It seems harmless at first, but over time, Max starts to get addicted to his newfound power. This build was simple, but really fun. Since the first episode of LEGO Goosebumps, I knew I wanted to do this cover. For the build, instead of trying to use an actual LEGO mirror piece or sticker, I just made the mirror hollow and built the reflection on the other side. For the minifigure, I simply made a mirror image using pieces that I had duplicates of, and as you can see, his legs are slowly disappearing. To make the oval mirror symmetrical, I was able to use this snot technique that connects pieces moving in opposite directions, and the mirror is able to be angled as well. On the back wall, you'll find some random boxes, tools, the overhead light, and a spider web like we see on the cover. Next up, we have The Haunted Mask 2. I chose to make the second in the series before the first because I thought the cover would be just a bit more fun to make in LEGO with all of its background details. But for those of you who love the first book, don't worry, as I'm sure I'll get to it eventually in a future episode, as it's an absolute classic as well. In the second entry, Steve Boswell, a pest and prankster, is assigned to help coach a first grade soccer team as a consequence for his pranks. However, the young kids give him a taste of his own medicine, starting a feud. To get back at the first graders, Steve hunts down the scariest mask he can find, one of an old, evil-looking man. But what Steve doesn't know is that once you put the mask on, it doesn't come off, and that it turns the wearer into an old man as well. For the haunted mask, I chose to go with this goblin minifigure and hairpiece from the Lord of the Rings set Minds of Moria. Of course it's not a perfect match, as nothing in these videos are, but I think it's a good resemblance to the original cover, especially in regard to the pointed ears and scraggly hair. That Cedric Diggory's body, which I thought would be a nice reference since the Harry Potter series is often related to Halloween. On the porch you'll find pumpkin decorations, and out in the yard you'll find some bushes, tangled weeds, a tree, and a lamp. Those cobblestone tiles are quite rare as they are exclusive to the Diagon Alley gift with purchase set from 2018. For the backdrop of this set, it's just dark blue bricks, but in front of it, I did add a layer of lighter blue to simulate some of the fog we can see on the cover. Overall, this was one of the most straightforward builds of this episode, but I still like the way it turned out. If you're enjoying the entry so far, please like this video and subscribe as it'll let me know if there's interest in part four. For the third entry on this list, I've chosen to build the Scarecrow Walks at Midnight. Jody and Mark regularly go to visit their grandparents on the farm, and things are usually good. But this time, things are off. Grandma and Grandpa are colder and sadder than usual, and things get really creepy when one night, Jody realizes that the Scarecrows in the cornfield are coming to life. The most interesting part of this build is the way I connected the stick arms to the Scarecrow minifigure. The holes on minifigure torsos are smaller than regular studs, so you unfortunately can't just start building out from a minifigure body in that way. So what I ended up coming up with was this small build that uses these hinge plates with these small bracket pieces. The hinges allow the brackets to be placed flush against the angles of the minifigure's torso. And then I stuck in some of these brown plant pieces for the arms. And on the back, I added some clips to attach a couple of more sticks coming out of the back of the minifigure. My version of the Scarecrow uses Indiana Jones's hat, a Mordor orc face, the Wizard of Oz Scarecrow body, and the legs from the Alien Conquest farmer. I think one of Scarecrow's faces from Batman would be a bit more accurate, particularly the one from the Dark Knight Tumblr, and there's probably a more accurate hat mold as well, but as I always say, I wanted to make do with the parts that I already had in my collection. This was another build that was pretty straightforward with how it's just a bunch of plant stalks and stick pieces at varying heights, but I think it translated well, and I think the varying shades around the moon in the background look really good as well. Moving on, this was an entry everyone knew I'd have to get to eventually, Monster Blood. It was one of the very first Goosebump books ever, being the third in the original series released all the way back in 1992, and it has one of the most recognizable of all Goosebumps covers. And that's really saying something, as Goosebumps covers are some of the most recognizable of all kids' literature in general. When Evan Ross goes to an old toy store, he purchases a mysterious can of monster blood that's fun to play with at first, but what Evan soon realizes is that the monster blood is alive and growing, and has an appetite all of its own. Now guys, I'm not gonna lie, this build was tough for me. When I initially set out to build it, I didn't think it'd be that hard, as I've made tons of LEGO staircases in the past in a lot of different styles. 
but this one was just absolutely stumping me. One of the challenges was finding a way to build the staircase with accurate colors that I had in my collection. You see, when I normally build customs, I tend to choose to build from pieces and colors that I know I have an abundance of in my collection. But with these Goosebumps books, I try my best to keep them as close to the original cover artwork as possible. And that's where the challenges come in. For the carpet on the stairs, I used dark red, and for the wood I used dark orange. And those two colors, particularly the dark orange, are pretty rare in my collection, so I don't have nearly as much part variety. Variety. But after trying a ton of different techniques, I finally came up with this design, which is actually really simple, as it's basically just bricks built on their sides. The other challenge with the build was the blood itself. For the life of me, I couldn't figure out how I wanted to make the blood. If it should be built into the stairs themselves, like how it is here, or if it should be an entire layer of tiles on top of the stairs, etc. I also would have liked for the blood to look more natural and flowing than it does here. I tried to get that effect by adding in these circular pieces, but it doesn't look nearly as liquid as it does on the cover, unfortunately. My favorite part of the build is this pair of glasses made out of just three pieces. They are a bit oversized, but minifigure glasses would have been too undersized. All in all, this build turned out okay, but I think it's definitely one of the weaker Goosebumps covers that I've made, which is kind of sad since it's based on such an iconic original cover. The next cover for today's video is perfect for the Halloween season, Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns. Drew Brockman loves Halloween, but two punks at school, Tabitha and Lee, always end up ruining the holiday for Drew and her friends. So Drew and her friends plan to get back at them this Halloween, but when the kids run into a group of mysterious pumpkin heads, things take a turn for the worst. For this build, I started with the road, which is made of dark gray tiles, and then worked my way out. On the edges you'll find these fences, and outside of that you'll find these creepy tree builds composed of Lego Technic pieces. The minifigures would be more accurate if I had five of the Jack Lantern head pieces. That piece debuted originally in the Scooby-Doo Lego theme, where it was used for the Headless Horseman and as a decoration for the Mystery Mansion. However, I didn't have five of them, so I used some orange minifigure head pieces as well as this other pumpkin piece. I gave the minifigures all dark blue torsos to match what we see on the cover. And there's also a dog, so I used the only dog with a removable head that I know of, Scooby-Doo himself, and replaced it with this trick-or-treat bucket from the skeleton minifigure that was part of the Monsters collectible minifigure series. I tried to originally stick that bucket on top of the Lego Bulldog piece, but unfortunately it wouldn't fit. I also included this owl hiding up in the branches of one of the trees, and this smell box. For the backdrop, I made a pink and purple setting sun. I also sprinkled in some of these cheese slopes for some fall leaves. This build was really fun and just the right amount of challenge without being too frustrating. For the last entry on today's list, I have to go with one of the most requested, Calling All Creeps. Seeing requests for covers like this is part of why I love hearing from all of you and making these videos. To me, this was never one of the most popular Goosebumps books, but seeing how many comments requested this one really changed my mind, and I didn't want to let all of you down, so here it is. When 6th grader Ricky Beamer gets kicked off of the school paper by the 8th grade editor Tasha, he gets revenge on her by putting a request into the paper for creeps to call her up. However, Ricky's in for it when the creeps start calling him instead. From the start, I knew I wanted to use the Jurassic World raptor heads for the creeps, but I wasn't sure how I wanted to make the bodies. I haven't done many builds that blend organic looking pieces like animal and minifigure parts with regular bricks, because it often ends up looking awkward and not meshing well. I went back and forth on whether or not to build brick belt arms so that I could give them sleeves that were the right colors, or to just stick with using the raptor arms, and I even built arms for a couple of them before deciding to just stick with the molded ones, and I think it looks better than anything I could have brick built. Each of the creeps have slightly different body builds that give them different heights, but they all follow a similar pattern, besides the big creep in the back, who's a bit more unique than the others. For him, the arms come from Green Goblin, and I made him some brick-built claws so that I could make the posing a bit more accurate to the cover. To pose the creeps at various angles, they simply pop onto Technic pins that allow them to be swiveled to match what we see on the cover. For the phone, I'm just using a minifigure phone piece balanced in the creep's hand. Of course, I also made the telephone booth that has the phone console inside and the row of translucent bricks for the lights at the top. For the background, I used magenta and purple bricks for the night sky, and added in some plates for the telephone lines. And that is the end of today's list. Now that we've done 3 episodes, we've made it through a total of 17 covers. However, we've still only started to scratch the surface of the original series that had 62 entries. So please, continue to let me know your suggestions down in the comments below, and if you haven't seen the first two episodes, go back and watch those if you'd like. These Goosebumps videos are always a ton of work, but they're really rewarding and fun as well, and always get me nostalgic, especially at this time of year. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and until next time, see you later.